In previous sections, you've seen how the nutritional war at sea was won and lost when German U-boats finally failed in their efforts to starve Britain out of the war, and the Royal Navy successfully blockaded German ports. You've also seen how young farm workers left the land to fight, and in many cases to die for their country, and how women came to play a major role in ensuring that the land continued to produce as much as it possibly could to feed both the civilian and military populations. To this end, it was helped by nutritional scientists who helped to maximize and rationalize food production and to assist and advise the government on nutritional policies. That is why I am standing outside the Rowett Institute for Nutrition and Health, which was established after the Great War and went on to play a major role in nutrition in the interwar years, during the Second World War and to the present day. The Rowett was started by a young scientist called John Boyd Orr, who was a medical officer in the Royal Army Medical Corps during the Great War. Boyd Orr won a military cross for bravery on the Somme in 1916, a decoration he refused to wear. He was of the opinion that those who really deserved it had been killed. He was also awarded a Distinguished Service Order during the Third Battle of Ypres in 1917. After the First World War, his work at the Rowett led to the provision of free school milk for children and to the formulation of a rationing policy during the Second World War. Boyd Orr was of the strong opinion that food and prosperity for all people on earth led to peace. His practical commitment to this philosophy led to him being awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1949. Our focus now returns to the First World War and to the final presentation of our series.